job with you. Yes, February is already over. How was February for you? How was the conjunction? How was the Kazemi? How was just all the things? February was very busy, quite a bit going on. And now we're heading into this energy of March. March is starting off, I would say a little bit better, honestly. We have Jupiter semi-square Neptune. Jupiter is still in Taurus, Neptune is in Pisces. And with that, we have this energy of like expansion. So we have like the traditional ruler of Pisces and we have the modern ruler of Pisces and Jupiter's traveling through Taurus. So it's been expanding all of our understanding and our interactions and the way that we engage with our, with our um, senses and our sense of peace, our sense of understanding ourselves, our grounding and what makes us feel grounded and secure and safe and stable and how that ties into our values. So Jupiter has been doing all of that work um, and then coupled with that energy of Uranus that has been coming over and just kind of like, oh, this is trash. Let's just <laughs> knock it over and be done with it. But we have this with the semi-square between Neptune and Jupiter, that's making a kind of tension. It's creating a little bit of a slight tension between the two of what are your dreams? What are your aspirations? What are the things that you would like to build for yourself, but in a very like artistic sense and or, or bringing up the things from your unconscious and making them real sense? And how does that relate to the things that ground you, make you feel stable, make you feel safe. So you may feel a tension between those two things, but these are energies that we can, um, you know, mutable water and fixed air or fixed earth <laughs> definitely are not necessarily the, maybe the best, but think of it this way. Taurus is kind of like the sand. It is the earth and although it may be moving, you know, sand can move the plates, tectonic plates that hold up the, you know, the land and the water can move. It's pretty stable. Uh, but it's the sand and the land underneath the oceans. And so they can rest on top of each other. They can interact together. They can engage together without having to be in this very destructive manner or anything of that nature. So how is it that you get your what create what provides you with stability what provides you with security to support your dreams okay think of it like that then on the let's see so that's a, that's on march 3rd that's starting off nice and early in the month and then march 9th we have mercury enters aries so all of this kind of dreaming up and like talking in ways that maybe don't make a lot of concrete sense will be coming to an end in the sense that we will get some action behind our thoughts, behind our words, stuff like that. So if people are feeling like a little, you know, like to tussle, there may be some action behind that. But more than likely, it'll help us to actually put some action behind our dreams. March 10th, we get this new moon in Pisces. Love new moon in Pisces. It is a great time coming and following up from a full moon in Virgo where you should be reviewing, you should be assessing, you should be going through and saying like, okay, this is working, this isn't working, this is in alignment, this isn't in alignment. And now Pisces is like, great, I'm going to like drag you underneath the ocean or drag you out into the middle of space. We're going to drag you into these spaces of creation. And I want you to figure out and put into space, put into place these dreams. I want you to think outside of the box. I want you to go even bigger. So whatever it was that you were putting together, Together, that whatever it was you were clearing out and now you have this brand new open space Pisces is like wonderful let's look and see what we can put in there let's look and find what's there waiting for you to discover it now that you don't have these distractions from the things you cleared out from the Virgo full moon we have on the 11th so the day right after Venus enters Pisces so we're getting a lot of really nice Pisces energy kind of really coming up uh, we're getting some very uh, some emphasis on things related to beauty, feeling beautiful, but like our, making our dreams beautiful, making us, uh, making our sense of ourself aligned with beauty. And what does that mean? What does that look like? What does that feel like? So it'll be maybe a little bit of a shift in energy, just a slight bit, but I think in a good way. We love that Pisces Venus energy as they come together and create like great works of art and things of that nature, great ways of expressing who we are and how we feel and things of that nature. On the 19th, which is a Tuesday, that is Mars Day, we have the sun entering Mars. We have spring equinox. Love spring equinox. We had a really like intense winter, I believe, that was grounded in this idea, that Capricorn energy of like 
Are you willing to put in the work to get the things you want? The Saturn entering into Pisces, like there's been a lot of emphasis about, uh, and a lot of people when I do my tarot readings have been getting the tower card in reverse. And that's very much, I've been seeing it, um, as kind of this emphasis on, you don't need to get struck by lightning. You don't need these big extreme things to change. You can understand what needs to be adjusted. You can understand where you need to make changes and you can do so without it having to be these extreme events. And so Saturn and in Pisces and this winter time and this kind of really like going deep within has said like you have an awareness of the things that are in alignment with what it is and how it is you view yourself, how you would like to view yourself and what is not. Are you willing to do what needs to be done in order to make those changes to get into alignment? And sun entering into Aries is really giving us that astrological push into the new year. That is that rebirth energy. That is if we have gone down into the underworld during the winter time, during this time of reflection, and we've gone within and gotten like close and clear on what it is that's going on within ourselves. Aries is that invitation to like come out. It is that fire that lives within us that gives us that creative energy to push and to actually create and to be outside of ourselves. Like we don't need to be in our heads anymore or deep within the underworld, deep within our unconscious. We can move some of those things outwards and we can start to express them. It's time for us to grab the wand. It's time for us to go on the journey. It's time for us to do the things. Action is the word. Survival is the word. Like Aries is all about that energy of like the will to live, the will to direct yourself and your actions and your energy to be consciously aware of where it is that you are putting your attention and how that will impact what are the things and the outcomes that will come from your actions. So be very mindful of what you're putting together during this time of this um, spring equinox. I think it's a great time to always go in and reflect on your goals and things of that nature to see maybe what might need a revamp. But even more than that, what needs to be put into action? Where have you maybe been hesitating or where have you maybe been scared or fearful? And where do you need to tap into? You know, Aries and Libra energy are going to be going across from each other. We've had a lot going on with Chiron and Aries. We have the North Node in Aries right now. Everything is really pushing towards like, who are you? What are you doing? How do you get those things into alignment if they are not? If you are still very much so planted in this space of being more focused on the other than on the self, Aries and all this Aries energy has been like, no, 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 no. Come back, come back, turn that around, reflect upon yourself. You've got to get yourself right because you're no help to anyone else when you are out of alignment. So like really taking that time to kind of make sure that those things are in place. And if you've been hesitating or waiting on something, it is really a push to act. But it's a whole season of this. And it's that it's that getting up and going that um, the ram energy of Aries, the emperor energy of Aries. So if you've been needing more structure, if you've been needing to strategize, if you've been needing to just get a little bit more, um, a little more specific a little bit more action oriented towards your goals like those things those habits and things can also come into play and then we get into that Taurus energy which is very much like okay I love it great wonderful but let's like actually build up some space to plant these seeds so that they'll grow and we can nurture them so on the 22nd coming up pretty closely after the sun enters Aries we have Mars entering Pisces so again it's a little it's there's a push between these dreams and putting your dreams into action and they just kind of pile on top of each other it's like what are your dreams put into action what are your dreams put them into action and that's very much so the kind of like the theme for March. On the 23rd, we then get Jupiter semi-sextile the true note. So again, we talked about Jupiter being in Taurus. We talked about Neptune being in Pisces. Well, now we're looking at Jupiter semi-sextile, which is um, coming together. It's a very supportive energy. The true note, which is in Aries. And so in this case, we're going to be seeing that there's going to be kind of a working together, a saying of like, again, this very much so we've had this time of expansion related to the areas of Taurus of what makes us feel secure, what makes us feel grounded, what makes us feel safe, what makes us feel valued, you know, what are our values and figuring out what that looks like, just expansion there, whether that is towards something in an in a expansion towards greater or expansion of like things weren't so great and now like it's really becoming a big deal how not so great they were. You know, it's just kind of been growing. And now Aries is coming in with that true no, that that snake. And if you haven't um, 
If you haven't looked at it already on my website, the Bliss Institute, uh, www.thebliss.institute.org, I have a wonderful article up about the True Node and the, or the North Node and the South Node, uh, North Node in Aries, South Node in Libra, and how those are kind of interacting together, particularly in this idea of our being able to kind of um, come together and to live out these cycles in our lives and of the snake, the, I believe you say, or, 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 <laughs> of course I can't say it now, but the snake that, that swallows its tail and that is very much related to the Jungian idea of the mandala and the circle kind of being the first original kind of archetype that we get to in this idea of the self, but the self capital S, right? And so while we've been doing all of this exploratory work, all of these things that are going on with Chiron, all of the things going on with Taurus, all of the things going on with Pisces, we've been really needing to go within and get that clarity in our unconscious. Find out what's going on there. Find out those hidden drives, those hidden desires, those things that we have been suppressing and figuring out what those are and making the unconscious conscious. And so as Jupiter is in Taurus, I'm really kind of looking at those things that have been expanding, whether those have been the things that have been driving us unconsciously or those are the things that we have been consciously choosing. That Chiron in, or that Chiron, that North Node energy in Aries is really saying like, is this moving you towards where you should be going, towards being more true and authentic to yourself? Are you willing to risk the situation and the circumstances of how you have built up your life in order to actually say like, I am this person and own that energy? Or have you been in the cycle of doing the South Node in Libra where it is, okay, well, let me figure out what everyone else thinks. Well, let me take a look and see what's socially acceptable. Well, let me make sure that I'm not rocking the boat too much. They're maintaining the peace through making sure that everybody's in a good space and in a good place. But in turn, that can make you sacrifice some of these elements, some of these values that Jupiter and Taurus, some of these values that you have that you really believe strongly in. But if they're perhaps outside of the norm or they're perhaps one of the things where people are saying well don't do that that's selfish don't do that that's not you know good for everybody well um, are, is the is the singular person not a part of the group are you as an individual not a part of the community and so there really is a conversation that needs to be had about like making decisions and the falsehood of claiming to make decisions that are to benefit the group that don't actually benefit anyone but the actual person who's making this claim. A lot of shifts about things are related to values have come into the conversation and come into the lexicon of the discussions of things that are going on within um, our, our society at the moment and oftentimes they're very much presented in the well this isn't good for the children or this isn't good for this and this is it's such a wide group of people um, that, that the values are presented to represent but then when asked how does this impact the individuals when asked individuals well what do you think about it they're not always in agreement there's a disconnect that's going on there but it's being brought to your personal attention the personal here is to say like have you explored what this actually looks like when you live this out versus what it is when you say these things theoretically like and are you willing to actually live these things out because sometimes what you may believe is something that is a core value or a core belief of yours isn't in actual alignment when you have to live it out okay so um, on the 25th we have the full moon lunar eclipse in Libra this is the start of our lovely eclipse season this is the opening before we head into the solar eclipse um, in April and so this is going to be a time uh, with it being the full moon and with it being an eclipse, this is really like a moment where we are going to be again really being pulled within. And again, so it's this dance, and it's a beautiful way to look at it. I have also a, a wonderful post on my website about the dance between Mars and Venus, but this is really a dance between this conscious and unconscious our egos the self the shadow the different parts of who we are the different archetypes that exist and like are we willing to do the work to actually bring ourselves back to being whole go back to the grounding that we've been looking for the disconnect that many people are experiencing whether that is from themselves or from their community is because there's a disconnect from the self and we've been projecting ourself onto these archetypes onto these um, figures, celebrities, um, our parents, um, people in power. You know, we, we 
project this image of the self onto them and then we look to this person or this idea or this group as the leader, as the way to guide us. And the thing is, is that it'll never fully be in alignment. One, because you cannot project an archetype that is such a strong, um, powerful energy onto another person. They can't carry that weight, right, of responsibility, of that energy. And it really is something you have to incorporate and, and free up within yourself so that you can actually utilize this energy and put it towards something useful instead of it kind of like just um, marinating within you and just kind of clogging you up. Think about when, you know, if you have sinus issues or, you know, you get a cold or something like that and your, and your airways get clogged up with mucus and stuff like that. That's kind of what happens when your unconscious work, when that psychic energy within you doesn't get uh, integrated or doesn't have anywhere to go. It clogs you up. And so you feel that heaviness, you feel that disconnect, you feel that desire for more. On a full moon, Eclipse, particularly in Libra, is saying like, what if we blocked out all of these connections? What if we separated this idea of you and the other? And we really said, okay, without that, what would this be like? What would your life be like? What would this look like? How do you actually make a healthy connection between yourself and others? How do you make a healthy connection between the different parts of your personality and the self. And it's really pulling us into that space before we head into the solar eclipse, um, in uh, which is during the new moon in Aries that will be coming up in April, when that time is really like a rebirth, a birthing process, the warrior's energy coming out of defending who we are in a sense of standing strong and knowing what that is. But if you're not spending that time exploring, if you're not getting clear, if you're not having the conversations, which I do believe that once we get a little bit more of this Gemini energy coming up. And I think it's going to be a fantastic year, next couple of years for Gemini. Uh, but once we get more of this Gemini energy around May, uh, April, May, we're going to see better and improved communications. Uh, we may see also like some more uh, issues with communications, uh, truthfulness and things like that. But we will also see an increase in our ability and an increase and improvement in our ability to be able to express ourselves, to want to explore ourselves. I think that we may have an increase in interest in the intellectual side and the education and the sharing of education and knowledge of things like and factual knowledge, not necessarily um, um, unsupported knowledge. Uh, unsupported by facts knowledge. So I think they will see some of these things starting to come into place and that will be because we will be having that Venus um, time in the underworld happening in that time and we'll also be having Jupiter moving into Gemini during that time. But Jupiter does what Jupiter does. Whatever is there, it will expand. So if we're dealing with a lot of misinformation, if we're dealing with a lot of poor communication skills, if we're dealing with a lot of people expressing their emotions through actions that are not in alignment or um, in, in the best way to communicate, all we'll see is expansion. So all of this work is kind of gearing us up to say, are you willing to learn the skills to be able to communicate? Are you willing to learn and do what it is you have to do to get clear on your values and yourself in order to be able to better express that as this energy becomes more rampant in Gemini as we move through 2024? So I will talk about all of that. <laughs> I will talk about all of that. Um, in our next video, in the April video, which will be coming up at the end of March. So look out for that one. And if you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe, like this video. Let me know what your plans are for these eclipse season, what your plan is for the new moon in Pisces, um, what your plan are, plans are in general. Like how do you, how do you plan to cope with this energy? If you would like assistance in incorporating um, and integrating the unconscious into the conscious and getting a better understanding and clarity on who you are, are and what makes up the self for you, please reach out. I'm happy to help. I'm happy to guide you through this process and to get you on the path towards really like knowing the self and knowing who you are. All right, so that's going to be it. I will see y'all later. Have a great one and thank you so much for watching. I'll see